Good morning, love bugs, and happy Saturday. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am pulling up with a brand new video. Um, today we're going to be doing a book and breakfast with your girl, Brie. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my favorite recipes, and we're going to be talking all things bookish. I'm going to be doing these twice a month for those of you who want more foodie content as well as more bookish content. So today I'm going to be sharing um, one of my favorite new recipes. These are egg in the whole toast um, with ricotta and sauteed mushrooms and spinach. So if you're interested, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, let's go ahead and start off with getting the food prepped. Um, you're going to take whatever bread of your choice. Um, and of course, this is an egg in the hole. I like to take a small shot glass and go ahead and cut the holes out of the bread. Go ahead and melt down some butter in a pan. About two tablespoons. I put a little bit too much in here, but I, I take some out later. <laughs> go ahead and melt that down in the pan. And you're going to add in your toast slices. You're going to allow those to toast for just a little bit. Um, and then you are going to crack your eggs right into the middle of that baby. This isn't like the kind of recipe that's anything new. But it's the kind of recipe that you can really put whatever you want on it. I have some old vlog footage that I think I'm going to post that also has a different version of this recipe. So... It's very versatile, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay those down in the pan. You want to make sure you have a good amount of butter in the pan because you want these to get really nice and toasty. And then after about a minute, I'm going to go ahead and crack my eggs in. So while we're letting these cook, I'm going to talk to you guys about some of my five-star reads for February. February was an amazing reading month. And I really tried to focus on black authors. I read a lot of black romance over the last month and I had a lot of really great reads. The first one I want to highlight is All About Love by Bell Hooks. This is a 13 chapter book that seeks out to answer the question, what is love? And Bell Hooks speaks on love from many different angles, from societal pressures to the way that we raise boys and girls within the family home. Um, I just found this to be incredibly eye-opening. There were definitely some points in the book where it felt like um, I was hella being called out, but I think it's definitely something that everybody should read, and it has definitely been a big eye-opener for me as someone who was seeking to enter into relationships as someone with chronic illness. It's definitely really opened my eyes and something that I've also put my family on to. Next up, after reading All About Love, it definitely kind of made me read all of my romances in a different light. Um, and I really wanted to highlight You Made a Full of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Amezi. This is an incredibly popular book, one that I was really excited to get into. And I'm so happy that I went ahead and cracked it open this month. This is a contemporary romance that follows the main character, Fei-Yi, as she is attempting to get back into the dating world after four years um, of mourning her dead husband. Um, we see her going from just taking the deep dive into relationships to trying to integrate that into focusing on friendship. Um, but all of that kind of gets derailed when she goes on a trip with a guy that she is semi-dating and ends up falling for his dad. Um, although this story is obviously a very messy one, there were so many points in this story where I literally had to put my book down and annotate, and I never annotate, but it was just, I don't know, not really cathartic, but I felt like it was just incredibly eye-opening and kind of heart-stopping and it's one of those books where you have to look beyond the drama um, and see what the author is trying to convey and it's such a beautiful story of loss um, and personal redemption for our main character. 
Um, so many people say they just can't root for Faye, and honestly, if you can't root for Faye, I think you need to sit down and think about why you can't root for her. <laughs> um, it is definitely a messy contemporary romance, but Aquake and Mezzi does it so well. So I highly suggest you made a full of death with your beauty if you not, have not read it already. All right, now while we've been allowing these to cook, um, you want to go ahead and prep whatever it is that you need um, for the toppings for this. So I just went ahead and cleaned off some button mushrooms as well as some spinach. I'm just double checking to see how things are cleaning up. For the mushrooms, you don't want to run them under water. Um, I just like to take a damp paper towel and then clean everything off um, because you want these to get nice and browned when they get into the pan. If you rinse them off with water, they're going to get kind of waterlogged and they're more so going to steam as opposed to sauteing in the pan. So um, make sure you go ahead and get those nice and prepped while your toasts are cooking. And it's time to flip these babies. Uh, I'm a little clumsy over here, but they still look cute. <laughs> All right, and now that we have these cooking on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting up those mushrooms. And let's talk about some more books. So, um, Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert had no reason to be so damn adorable. This is a YA contemporary romance. And you have your main characters, Brad and Celine. Brad and Celine were best friends in their younger years, but as they got into their high school, more formidable years, um, they grew apart. Celine is a bona fide weird girl. She is into more so of the true crime mystery thing. She has her own TikTok account, um, and she is relatively famous in her world. Um, and you have Bradley, who is the consummate it guy. Everybody wants to be around him. Everybody loves him. And when he moved on to being around the more popular kids, their friendship collapsed. And in Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute, you see Brad and Celine come back together and foster their friendship, which eventually turns into a romance as they go on this expedition or, in order to win a college scholarship. Um, this tackles so many things from OCD to the abandonment from a parent. There are so many different aspects of this book, and I love that for a YA book, this does center black love. It was so incredibly adorable. Brad and Celine's banter was just hilarious. I loved everything about this book. I usually don't read a lot of YA romance, but this was done so incredibly well. Um, I just really love Talia Hibbert's writing, and it has just convinced me to go ahead and read the rest of her books. I think I'm going to, to try to tackle the Brown Sisters trilogy soon because Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute really just like altered my brain chemistry. If you're looking for a really adorable romance, you just want something fluffy, you just want to feel good, I highly suggest checking that out. All right, the toasts are finished. I'm just gonna pick these up and put them on a plate and put them off to the side while we finish cooking everything else. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a little bit more butter in the pan, um, just cause we kind of soaked up what we already had going on. And then I still have the little like toast circles. So I like to cook those cause I like to eat them while I'm waiting for everything else to cook. <laughs> so I'm gonna toast those on one side of the pan and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop my mushrooms in. And we are going to let those cook down really really good I just add a little bit of salt and pepper to season um, and I like to make sure that I get like a really nice saute on these so I like to make sure they get like really brown and crispy and yummy alrighty while we're waiting for these to cook down because mushrooms they take some time let's talk about some more romance because your girl 
I finally stepped into my A.E. Valdez era. If you don't know who A.E. Valdez is, A.E. Valdez is an up-and-coming indie author, a black indie author, and I went ahead and started in on her books, and I started off with All I've Wanted and All I've Needed, uh, as well as The Beginning of Forever, which is the follow-up novella to All I've Wanted, All I've Needed. All I've Wanted, All I've Needed is another contemporary black romance, um, and this follows our main female character, Harlow. When we meet Harlow, she is turning down the proposal from her boyfriend of two years. Um, They were high school sweethearts. They grew up together. But when he proposes, she kind of has this realization that he's not proposing for the right reasons, and she really starts to question whether what she feels for him is love or attachment due to a fear of abandonment. And when she turns down his proposal, she decides to go on a trip. She goes out and goes to a yoga course and she gets her license to teach. Um, After she does this, she gets an offer to move to Washington and she takes it. During her time in Washington, she is reconnected with a best friend, but also makes a new best friend. Um, in meeting her client's brother, she meets Ace and he is the main, uh, love interest in this story. But what I love about Harlow and Ace is that they are a true friends to lovers story. Harlow knows that she is in a place in her life where she's not necessarily ready to force herself into the box of being in a relationship. And Ace is just like her rock. He really forces her to kind of stop and take a look at what she needs and to stop people pleasing and telling everyone yes and really taking accountability for how she moves through life. Um, And you see their friendship develop in the most caring and tender way. And you know that there's no way that these two aren't going to fall in love. I feel like this story is the definition of two people actively choosing each other it it was such a beautiful thing to see on paper not only did I love the love story between Harlow and Ace but also Harlow's best friend Kyrell I love their relationship I love to see how he supported her um but also supported Ace um and you kind of see later on in the beginning of Forever which is the novella that chronicles their time getting married and how they choose to celebrate that marriage, you see like the most beautiful bromance form between Kyrell and Ace and they really do have their own special brotherhood and I think that is something that is just so important to see with black characters. If you have not read this, I highly suggest going to Amazon and picking up both of these books. They were just phenomenal I think about Sunshine and Ace on a daily. Um, So yeah, that is All I've Wanted, All I've Needed, and The Beginning of Forever by A.E. Valdez. Just mm, chef's kiss, chef's kiss. All right, and then once these are nice and golden brown, I'm just going to go ahead and add in some clean spinach to the pan. And let's talk about another book real quick. Um, I came across this book called Sweet Vengeance. It's a debut novel and y'all, so, so good. If you're into monster romance, you need this. Um, We have a plus size Nigerian FMC and when we meet her, she is summoning a demon to come help her unalive her rapist. There are some very heavy themes in this as well as killing Um, But this was so good and so spicy, and I was not expecting to fall for the love between a woman and a demon. But man, was this the sweetest demon I have ever seen. The way that he rode for her, the way that Malachi loved him some joy, y'all, so cute. If you love a good monster romance, you gotta go pick this up. It was suggested to me from a TikTok friend, and I mean, it ate and left no crumbs. 
So now we're going to top this off. I'm just taking some fresh ricotta cheese and I'm just going to give it a little schmear over the toast. Um, I like to lay this down and then add a little bit of salt and pepper um, just to season because, you know, we got to season our babies around here. And this comes out so good. This is it's different, but it's good. I'm telling y'all it was delicious. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start topping this off with our mushrooms and spinach. And I like to add these when they're still warm because it kind of gets the ricotta all like nice and melty and it's really yummy. Then I'm just going to top this off with a little bit of balsamic glaze from Trader Joe's. Don't do the vinegar, get the glaze. It's so good as a topping. I, I put this on kind of like everything. <laughs> And there we have it. That's our egg in the holes. These come out so good. Um, I typically like to cook these um, so the yolks aren't runny. I'm not the biggest fan of runny yolks. But that's it for the recipe. We've got our food. We've got our coffee. And I am also working on a book as well. So while we are wrapping up the food portion, I'm going to talk to you guys about one more book. I read this on audiobook and y'all... I've been trying to get into more sapphic romance, and so I had to go ahead and pick this up once I downloaded the Libby app. This is Devon and Chris plan a wedding, y'all. I I don't know if, um, if there's another sapphic romance that can top this for me. I've read several, but this is definitely my favorite of what I've read so far. When we meet Devon and Chris, they are entering into a reality game show. And the premise of this game show is that you are paired as couples and your job is to try to convince your parents that you are going to randomly get married in six weeks. So you have to convince your entire family that this wedding is going to happen. And when you get to the end, if they believe that it is happening, then you win $200,000. Um, and so when we meet Devon, she is coming into this process as a means to come out to her family. And Chris is actually genuinely looking for love. And their relationship blossoms so beautifully throughout this book. It was so cute. It made me cry several times. At like 20 out of 10 stars. If you have not read Devon and Chris, I highly suggest getting it in the audiobook. It will make you cry and it will make your heart feel warm and fuzzy. So that's it for breakfast time. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. If you want to try it out, I'll have all of the directions in the description box. Now let's talk about some current reads and some March hopefuls. Okay, y'all. So those are my top book picks for the month of February. I have to be honest and say that like February was an awesome reading month. Everything I've read was amazing. I mean, everything. I, I would say from three and a half to five stars, every single thing that I've read. I am on a goal of reading 120 books in 2023 um, and so that's usually 10 books a month. I, I end up reading a little bit more though. Um, so if you're interested in seeing all of the books that I read in February, I will be doing reading wrap-ups over on Instagram and on TikTok for those of you that enjoy that short form content. And then I will try, probably try to post them on shorts too. Let's talk about the two books. Well, three books that I'm currently reading. Um, and then I also wanna go ahead and get into some hopefuls for March. So let's start off with the three books that I am currently reading. I am over halfway through The Secret Lives of, I think it's The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. And y'all, I, I don't even know how to describe this book. All I know is that it is messy, it is raw, and it is basically like church folk tea. Like, it is the quintessential hypocritical church people laid bare for you. <laughs> and it is so much tea, so much shade, but so good and far more eye-opening than I thought it would be. It's a really quick read. I'm currently listening to it on 
Libby, if you don't have the Libby app, you need to get it. Um, a lot of my TikTok tent friends finally put me on to Libby and it's basically a digital library. You can connect it to your library card no matter what library card you have. Um, and you can download ebooks and audiobooks through the Libby app. So I've been listening to audiobooks on Audible. Like I still get my credits every month, but I'm also listening to several different audiobooks on Libby as well. And that's why I'm listening to it. It's a really quick, short read. I'm probably going to go ahead and finish it once I get off of this video. I'm probably going to listen to it while I sit down and edit. Um, the other two books that I'm finished reading, you guys have seen me working on this throughout this video and I'm literally like I, I have like three chapters left this is the personal librarian and this is by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray and this is so good this is a, a very charming um look into the life of JP Morgan's personal librarian um Belle DaCosta Green and this goes through her life from early childhood of losing her father, who was a very prominent civil rights activist during the time, um, as her mother decides to go ahead and force herself and her children to pass as white. In her 20s, Belle is hired as J.P. Morgan's personal librarian, and we get to sit in the struggle with her, the excitement of having these opportunities as being a black woman, but also having to lose her identity. And also not just losing her identity, but being forced to lose her identity, being raised to lose her identity. She's the breadwinner of her family and her not accepting the, the role to pass has so much potential to not just destroy her career, but the lives of her entire family. When I got into this, because it was suggested in um, my friend here, A Love For Me, Akia, I was in her live and someone in her live suggested this book. And it sounded like super duper interesting, but I also didn't want it to be something that was more so um, like academic. It kind of sounded like it would be more academic. It sounded like it would be a little bit more straightforward, almost biographical. But this really is such a beautifully written story. And you just can't help but feel for Belle. So if you have not read this, I highly suggest it. If you're more into historical fiction, um, but you want something that does have that, you know, ring of truth to it, then I highly suggest this. This is bomb then i am also trying to keep up with working through this hunka hunka this is the love songs of web du bois and it is so good but it is meaty there's a lot in here this really reads like almost like an anthology um in a way you are getting to know your main character from the time that she is a small child around the age of four or five and all throughout her adulthood but you're also taken back into her past with her ancestors from those who literally came off the ship you have that juxtaposition of her ancestors who were a heavily mixed ancestry of course she had those african roots but also she had native creek ancestry and european ancestry and you see how all of that ancestry culminates into their own personal biases um, as this family grows and goes on into life. And you see how all of those personal biases and that deep rooted complex ancestry affects the main character. It's a lot, there is a lot and I would highly suggest um, when reading this, of course, I always say check your trigger warnings. You definitely want to check them with um, the personal librarian too, um, because there is mention of abortion, which I know can be very difficult for people. Um, it's not fully on page, but part of that experience is in the book. And here there are instances of child abuse, um, SA, um, drug use, things of that nature, addiction. So I would highly suggest checking your triggers with this guy right here um, because it is a lot. There is a lot of ancestral trauma, but this is written in such a beautiful way that it doesn't feel hurtful and it doesn't feel heavy. It's, this is not a difficult read, I would say. It's just a lot. It's heavy. It's chunky. So um, I got maybe like 
a quarter through this and I wanted to throw a little romance in it. I'm a bit of a mood reader. So I put this down, have picked up several romances and I'm gonna start picking this back up tonight. Um, Cause I wanna try to have this finished by the time it's due. Now let's talk about my March hopefuls. Um, I pulled 10 books here since obviously I'm trying to at least read 10 books this month, but I'm sure I'm going to read more. Um, I also have a haul that I filmed at the beginning of February. Something has been going on with all of my footage and I was finally able to get it recovered. So a lot of the videos that you guys are going to see are going to be super duper old, but um, a few of these are actually in that haul or recently purchased. The first one is the second part of the Losers Duet by Harley LaRue. Now I know y'all are probably like Brie. What are we doing with the low white boys? Listen, if you are a fan of dark taboo romance, if you are a fan of dark taboo why choose romance, I'm gonna need you to pick this up. This is, I guess technically it will be MMFMM. -M -M -M. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, if you've read this, but I will tell you guys, this is probably one of the filthiest books I have ever read. But there is something incredibly cathartic about the way that this is written and the relationship between the characters. This book actually starts off with a prequel novella, which is called The Dare. In that novella, you're introduced to the female, the female main character, Jessica, and the kind of ringleader of the guys, whose name is Manson. They are reconnected at a party and you find out that while they were in high school, they kind of had a little tryst. She was like the high school mean girl sweetheart that everybody wanted to be. And she had this like really kind of pompous reputation throughout high school and she bullied Mason and his friends. Um, but they always had an attraction to each other. And back in high school, her having a little thing with Manson led to him getting his ass kicked and getting kicked out of school. Um, they meet back up at a party. She loses a drinking game, game to him and she ends up taking his dare that she has to be basically like his sex slave for the night. Um, there are a whole host of trigger warnings for this. Um, but what I loved about what this set up was the nature of the consent within their relationship. Um, and I was so excited to learn more about Manson and his friends. And so in the Losers duology, you are getting not just Jessica and Manson, but you are also getting his friends, Jason, Vincent, and who else? I'm missing somebody. And Lucas. Yeah, Lucas. Lucas is my baby right there. But um, all of the guys are already in their own relationships and now they're bringing Jessica into the fold. And so when you get into the Losers duology, um, this is like two years after the dare. Jessica's coming back from college and she is really just is unsure about her life and coming home, she's realized that her friends aren't really her friends, they're all really horrible people. And she doesn't want to be a part of this group anymore, but she doesn't really know how to get herself away from it. Um, she ends up making some really bad bullying decisions toward these babies right here. And she ends up indebted to them again. And they are having some of the kinkiest, horniest sex of life. And <laughs> I've been enjoying every single second of it. Their relationship, the five of them together, is just like, it's raunchy, but it is also one of the sweetest things I have ever read. And I, I, I love it. I'm I'm a whore for these people. But I'm really excited to finish this. I'm probably going to start this tomorrow since I have a couple of books that are about to be finished. I picked up Beloved by Toni Morrison. I had planned on reading this for February, but I, I just didn't get around to it. I was reading so many things at one time. Um, but this is a classic. <laughs> And I don't have a lot of Toni Morrison in my collection. And I know I have read pieces of this, but I have not read the book in its entirety. So I wanted to pick it up and read it. And honestly, I, I want to put all of Toni Morrison's works on my shelf because Toni Morrison is kind of it for me. Toni Morrison, Bell Hooks, James Baldwin, Zora Neale Hurston are like my go-tos. So... 
Really excited to read this. Um, I'm going to try to go ahead and work on this soon. And this one I'm super excited about. I just bought this. Like it literally came in the mail like two days ago. Um, I am a Katie Roberts stan. This is a Katie Roberts stan account, okay? If you just want smut and vibes, you know, you're, you're cool with the plot, but you don't necessarily want the plot to be like hella plotting right now. Like you're just trying to get lost in the vibes. You need to read you some Katie Robert. And the fourth book in her Dark Olympus series just came out. And I'm so excited. This is called Radiant Sin. I've had this pre-ordered for like almost a year. Um, since she announced it a little bit before Wicked Beauty came out. Um, so the Dark Olympus trilogy is set in a world that mimics, I say mimics, <laughs> Um, the stories of the Greek gods. And so in the Dark Olympus series, you have these Greek characters, but there is no magic. There is no magic system. Think of these characters more as a political system um, and a social hierarchy. So this one is Cassandra and Apollo. As a disgraced member of a fallen house, Cassandra Gataki has seen firsthand what comes from trusting the venomous 13 but when the maddeningly gorgeous and kind apollo asks her to go undercover as his plus one at a week-long party hosted by a dangerous new power player cassandra reluc reluctantly agrees to have his back on one condition when it's all over and apollo has the ammunition he needs to protect olympus she and her sister will be allowed to leave for good apollo may be the city's official spy official spy master but it's his ability to inspire others that keeps him at the top. Despite what the rest of Olympus says, there's no one he trusts more than Cassandra. Yet even as their fake relationship takes a wicked turn for the scaldingly hot, a very real danger surfaces, threatening not only Cassandra and Apollo, but the very heart of Olympus itself. So basically it says it's a scorchingly hot modern retelling of Apollo and Cassandra. I'm really excited to get into this. Um, yeah, fake dating gets me every time. But Katie Robert gets me every time. I know there are a lot of people that aren't a fan of Katie Robert's writing. I feel like Katie Robert always comes in clutch when like I'm having a bad day or I'm in a reading slump and I just want to get like lost. You know, her books are smutty. They usually hop right in with the smut. I think she said this is more of a slow burn, but a slow burn for Katie Robert is more like you get it like a quarter of the way into it as opposed to getting it right off the top you know <laughs> if you've read court of the vampire queen you know what i mean about getting it right off the top um i'm really excited to read this i think the next book in this is cruel seduction and i'm almost positive that that one is a why choose romance so if you haven't gotten into katie robert and you enjoy erotica yeah the other books in the series are Neon Gods, which is Hades and Persephone, um, Electric Idol, which is Psyche and Eros, which is my favorite, um, and then Wicked Beauty, which is Helen, Patroclus, and Achilles. So next up, I'm really excited to read this. This is one of the books that I featured in my like 2023 TBR books that I really are like focusing on reading this year. And that is Blood Like Magic by LaSalle Sanbury. I think LaSalle Sanbury actually had a new book released today. I'll put it up here. I'll put the cover up here for you guys. Um, I'm really excited to get into this. Um, I, y'all know I'm pretty much here for all black fantasy, but if it's black fantasy with a black girl on the cover, you know, I'm gonna gobble it up. After years of waiting for her calling, a trial every witch must pass in order to come into their powers, the one thing Voya Thomas didn't expect was to fail. When Voya's ancestor gives her an unprecedented second chance to complete her calling, she agrees, and then is horrified when her task is to kill her first love. And this time, failure means every Thomas witch will be stripped of their magic. Voya is determined to save her family's magic, no matter the cost. The problem is, Voya has never been in love, so for her to succeed, she'll have to find the perfect guy, and fast. Fortunately, a genetic matchmaking program has just hit the market. Her plan is to join the program, fall in love, and complete her task before the deadline. What she doesn't count on is being paired with the infuriating Luke. How can she fall in love with a guy who seemingly wants nothing to do with her? 
With mounting pressure from her family, Voya is caught between her morality and her duty to her bloodline. If she wants to save their heritage and Luke, she'll have to find something her ancestor wants more than blood. And in witchcraft, blood is everything. I'm super excited to get into this. Um, this is actually a birthday gift from my mama. She got me both books. So she got me both books in the, I think it's, it's, it's a duology. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a duology. I don't know if there's supposed to be another one. But the last I checked, I was told that this is a duology. So I'm super hyped to get into this. If you have read this, let me know what you think. I feel like almost every book video, I talk about Anna Wong. But I, I just, I love Anna Wong. Also, pretty soon we're getting the release, like the cover reveal for um, King of Pride, which is the second book in her newest series, the um, Kings of Sin or something like that series. And obviously it, it's like each guy is one of the seven deadly sins or whatever. King of Wrath was amazing. Um, and I'm finally going to complete the Twisted series. This is Twisted Lies, book four, and this is Stella and Christian's book. Um, if, you if you have not heard me rave about this series over and over again, Twisted series is a series of contemporary romances that are all interconnected standalones and they chronicle the love lives of four different friends. Twisted Love is Ava and Alex. Twisted Games is Bridget and Reese. Twisted Hate is Jules and Josh. And then finally we have Twisted Lives who is Stella and Christian. Um, Stella is a full-time influencer and she is probably the one friend that throughout the series we don't know much about. She's there, but she's very quiet. She's very reserved. She's, you know, she's always there and down for her friends, but she is just not, she's more of a wallflower, you know? Um, and we kind of get some hints about like some, some issues with stalkers and the other books in the series. Um, and throughout the series, we are introduced to Christian. Um, Christian owns a high-tech security company he basically has his hands and everything and he is pretty much the don okay if you need something to happen you call christian harper okay <laughs> um and christian encounters stella and he becomes obsessed with her and i'm sure you you guys can guess that christian is the stalker this is a stalker romance <laughs> um grumpy sunshine of course anna wong does grumpy sunshine very well i'm really excited to read this um because i i really want to know more about stella but i love christian he comes up and i think every single book not just in the twisted series but also in the kings <laughs> the, the 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 kings of sin series he was also in um king of wrath yeah he was in king of wrath as well um, so Christian be everywhere. Christian know everybody and Christian be everywhere. And I'm here for it. I love me some Christian Harper. And I've, everyone says that Christian is their favorite. Just about everybody. Even though me personally, I don't know if anyone can beat Reese. I, lo I love me some Reese Larson. But I mean, I don't know. Christian, Christian's that dude. So I'm excited to finish the series. I have thoroughly enjoyed every single book in this series. Um, even though these are um, standalones, I do highly suggest reading them in order because if you don't, there will be like a lot of different references that may seem like kind of off the cuff, you know, um, if you don't read them in order. So that is Twisted Lies by Anna Wong. And then I'm finally going to read this. I have waited to read it because I've been told that it's going to break my freaking heart. <laughs> that is... Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. You guys know I read Before I Let Go at the end of 2022 and Kennedy Ryan instantly shot up to be one of my favorite authors. I love the way Kennedy Ryan writes, okay? I also finished um, a novella from her on Audible. It's called Coming Home. So cute. The epilogue was... <sighs> and the whole book was just black AF, okay? Um, but I have heard so much about this book. A fairy tale is upside down, a happily never after. I kissed the prince and he turned into a fraud. I was a fool and his love, fool's gold. Now there's a new player in the game, August West, one of the NBA's brightest stars. Fine, forbidden, he wants me, I want him. But my past, my fraudulent prince, just won't let me go. Um, everyone has told me that if I want something that is 
50,000 times better than It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, then I need to read this. Um, I don't know much about everything that happens in this book because I have tried not to spoil it for myself, but I do want to give you guys that trigger warning for domestic abuse. Um, I have been told that this book is very heavy, so do be mindful of that if you decide to pick this book up based off of this video. Always make sure you check your trigger warnings, but I'm really excited to read this. Kennedy Ryan is one of those authors just, that just knows how to break your heart and put it back together. So I have no doubt that this is going to be fabulous. Um, and then as soon as I finish this, I'm probably going to go ahead and get the next two in the series. This is another recent library pickup. I had this on hold for a good minute. Um, I've been wanting to read this and I was just going to buy it because the cover is so pretty. But then I was like, girl, it's such a library. Go, go read it. And then if I love it, then I will purchase the book. That is The Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. Can we just talk about how beautiful this cover is? An enthralling debut fantasy inspired by the legend of Shan Jae, the Chinese moon goddess, in which a young woman's quest to free her mother sets her on a dangerous path and pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. Um, I'm really excited to read this. I feel like I have really put down a lot of fantasy because the romance has been doing it for me lately, okay? But I wanted to get into some more fantasy and I also wanted to diversify my fantasy. Um, and obviously I read tons of fantasy by black authors, but I wanted to have, um, I wanted to just work on reading more from other authors of color. Um, and so there we go. I've been really hyped to read this and I'm pretty sure that my library has had, um, the second book in this duology which is the heart of the sun warrior so as soon as i have finished reading this i'm going to pick that up as well another classic that i haven't read and so many of you guys have been like brie if you don't read that damn book <laughs> this is another one that was in my 2023 t tbr um and that is seven days in june by tia williams i mean if you are in the bookish community in any capacity i'm pretty sure you have heard about seven days in June. Eva Mercy is a single mom and best-selling erotica writer who is feeling pressed from all sides. Shane Hall is a reclusive, enigmatic, award-winning novelist who, to everyone's surprise, shows up in New York. When Shane and Eva meet unexpectedly at a literary event, sparks fly, raising not only their buried traumas, but the eyebrows of the Black literati. What no one knows is that 15 years earlier, teenage Eva and Shane spent one crazy, torrid week madly in love. While they may be pretending not to know each other, they can't deny their chemistry or the fact that they've been secretly writing to each other in their books through the years. Over the next seven days, amidst a steamy Brooklyn summer, Eva and Shane reconnect, but Eva's wary of the man who broke her heart and wants him out of the city so her life can return to normal. Before Shane disappears, though, she needs a few questions answered. With his keen observations of creative life in America today, as well as the joys and complications of being a mother and a daughter, Seven Days in June is a hilarious, romantic, and sexy as hell story of two writers discovering their second chance at love. Y'all know I live for a second chance. Second chance romance is my trope. I'm just, I'm claiming it. it. That's my trope. I love a good second chance romance. So I'm really excited to read this. This has been on my shelf for a really long time, for like an embarrassingly long time, and I have not read it. So we are about to crack this baby open, and soon. I have two of my book of the month picks that I want to work on. Um, I did just pick my book of the month for March, which I can't remember the name of the book, but I will like put a picture over here for you guys. The picks were actually really good this month. Um, but I have several book of the month books that I need to like work on and finish. The first one is Someday Maybe by Oni Mabinelli. I don't know if I said her name right. I hope I did. But I picked this out for November, I think. Yeah, that's the author. She's a debut author as well. She is freaking gorgeous. Um, this is contemporary fiction and it chronicles the experiences of the main character who is, um, recovering and picking her life back up after she found, finds her husband, um, after he commits suicide. Um, I'm really excited to read this, although I know it's going to make me cry. Like, it, it's going to make me cry. I've accepted that. And I'm okay with that. Um, so I'm really, I'm excited to read it, but I'm also like, 
scared because I know that it's going to be kind of heartbreaking. But those who have actually read this told me that they really, really enjoyed it. So I am really excited to work on it. And then I picked this one up for February. The February picks were not that great. I'm going to be honest. Um, but I had already had my eye on this book anyway. This is a debut novel from Jessica George. And it is called Mame. And I believe this is supposed to be like a contemporary coming of age story. It's fair to say that Maddie's life in London is far from rewarding with a mother who spends most of her time in Ghana, yet still somehow manages to be overbearing. Maddie is the primary caretaker for her father who suffers from advanced stage Parkinson's. At work, her boss is a nightmare and Maddie is tired of always being the only black person in every meeting. When her mom returns from her latest trip to Ghana, Maddie leaps at the chance to get out of the family home and finally start living. A self-acknowledged late bloomer, she's ready to experience some important firsts. She finds a flat chair, says yes to after work drinks, pushes more recognition in her career, and throws herself into the bewildering world of internet dating. But it's not long before tragedy strikes, forcing Maddie to face the true nature of her unconventional family and the perils and rewards of putting her heart on the line. Smart, funny, and deeply affecting, Mame deals with the themes of our time with humor and poignancy, from familial duty and racism, to female pleasure, to the complexity of love and the life-saving power of friendship. Most important, it explores what it feels like to be torn between two homes and cultures. And it celebrates finally being able to be where you belong. So I'm excited to get into this. Um, I have heard nothing but amazing, th amazing things. This is one that um, definitely seemed to get pushed by its publisher. So I'm really excited to get into this and let you guys know what I think. All right, guys, that is it for my first book and breakfast with Brie. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. I wanted to work on finding ways to integrate bookish content without inundating you guys with hauls and lists of books. There's just a lot of things that I want to do differently on the channel. Um, I'm definitely in more of like a thoughtful point in my life right now. And I want to kind of make that the focus, um, whether I'm recording bookish videos or hair content or makeup content or whatever else. Um, I just want to make this channel cozier, even though I've, I've always tried to make it cozy, but I just want this channel to be cozier, um, a little bit more authentic. I don't want to get lost in the sauce, you know? <laughs> and I came up with this idea and it was just really, really exciting to me. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll be doing these videos twice a month, every month. So, um, you know, the first one for the month will be about bookish hopefuls and my top reads from the prior month. And then, you know, getting into the second one, we'll talk about my current reads and things of that nature. If you guys also kind of want to turn this into a book club situation, let me know. I wouldn't mind um, for all of us to choose a book of the month for each book to feature um for the second video for the month you know um and we can sit down and we can talk about that book as well so you guys let me know how do you like this format um a lot of you guys have also asked me to cook on the channel and i thought that this would be a really great way to integrate my love of cooking with my love of books and my love of youtube so just give me all of your good feedback in the comments down below of course i want to know what you're reading let me know what you're currently reading down in the comments I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys have a lovely Saturday and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.